guys, welcome back to the garage, man. We're gonna be continuing on the Ruckus build today, but today we're gonna be able to start putting some of the cooler parts on and actually watch this thing transform. I am upset with myself right now, bro. I should have painted these last night. Like, they would have had all night to freaking dry. So, uh, these are the front shock tubes. Now, this is what actually the, the front wheel attaches to. But not only those, also the damn wheels, man. I pressure washed them and cleaned them up last night. I should have masked these off and got them sprayed as well. Because I do want to paint them because they look a little grody. If I would have thought of it and sprayed them last night, they'd already be dry right now. <laughs> but it is what it is, man. Moving on. front shocks and the wheels all prepped and ready for paint um the shocks i'm actually just doing a satin black i just want them to look factory you know what i'm saying and i was about to go ahead and spray the wheels black as well but i'm like why man why go through all the work of respraying the factory wheels if i'm just gonna do them black like that's boring as hell right and not to mention like I know this probably looks black, but it's more of like a gray. Like there's a lot of metallic in it. I don't know if you're gonna be able to like see that in the camera or not, but it's kind of like a like a gun gray, like a metallic, you know what I'm saying? So I ran to Home Depot really quick and I'm surprised I was even able to find anything because there's like a shortage of spray paint right now, but I ended up getting this flat soft iron it's like a metallic gray a little bit lighter than what the wheel actually is but i think this is gonna actually like complement the colors on the ruckus pretty well like the white red black and then instead of just doing the wheels black i figured i would do something that would just stand out a little bit more but not stand out like crazy still have kind of like they could have came factory that color i got the shock sprayed already i'm letting this coat dry and i'll probably do another two coats on it i just want the paint to be nice and thick so that it'll kind of withstand you know abuse but i'm gonna go ahead and put the first coat on the wheels right now I'm actually excited to paint the wheels and get them all freshened up, man. This is a cool build. It's like simple and I don't know. It's exciting to me. A little change of pace from doing the regular old car stuff. Alright guys, that stuff is obviously going to need some time to dry. I must say, this engine came out looking like it is literally brand freaking new, man. I am so stoked on how well this thing cleaned up, dude. Like, all the zinc on the hardware, like, it's all still shiny. The aluminum casing is just, it's nice and bright. Like, this thing doesn't look dirty or dingy or any like it it looks like it's brand spanking new well the ruckus did only have 1200 freaking miles on it so i guess that is to be expected with such low mileage but yeah man i'm definitely stoked on how well this thing cleaned up but look see this is this engine cover is kind of like a like a gun gray it's really close to the color that we just sprayed the wheels this is a little bit darker the wheels are a little brighter but that's one of the reasons why i was going with a gun gray for the wheels just to just to match the whole like OEM plus type of uh, build that I'm going for with this. Anyhow guys, moving on to this 9.5 inch extension bracket. So these four holes right here is what actually attaches it to the frame itself. Pretty much like that. So we're gonna be using the factory spots where the engine originally bolted up right there. And then these two holes up here, there's already holes that are threaded um, on the chassis so it looks like those are the four attachment points now as for the engine side of it these two right here is what bolts to the engine this little bracket right here is going to have to be removed all right so this side's a 14 the actual bolt and then this big nut is a 17. oh wow oh wow 
got a fighter. Jesus Christ. Brevin! Me braving the hold aside of this thing. What's up, bro? You hold aside of this? This thing is tight as hell. Oh my God, is it freaking reverse thread or what? There it goes. Nice. All right. This thing slides over like this, right? But as you can see, there's some play. Um, the kit did come with some washers. Some washers that actually do fit over this bolt. So I'm assuming that the washers are to go in between there to take up that play. Put a washer on first and then go through here and then put the second washer on and then through the engine. Then the third washer for the spacer and then the fourth washer and then the nut. All right, so with one washer in between there, we have very little side to side play. So whenever we actually tighten this thing down, I assume that it will squeeze this in and pinch it on there really well. That looks pretty good to me, bro, but I'm, I'm gonna wait to actually tighten this thing up until we get it on to the frame itself. So that's next. All right, so this is all the rest of the stuff that it comes with. This is a extension bracket for the shock mount. So obviously the point where our shock actually mounts or coil over or whatever you want to call it um, is being moved back as well. So this will bolt up where the stock one mounted and then it braces itself against the frame and then the new shock mount will be out here in which we have some adjustability because there's two different spots you can use. Um, and this is the rest of the hardware that was included with the kit. Man, this thing is already looking freaking dope. So we have our extended brake cable and our extended throttle cable already installed. Uh, we have the extended swing arm and we have our extended shock mount installed with our aftermarket uh, coilover. So, so now moving on bro is uh, the air box delete. I mentioned in the last video, whenever you delete the air box and you run this aftermarket filter, uh, obviously you're gonna be getting more air. So more air, you need more fuel. Um, they include some little jets that you have to put inside of this carburetor. I'm not gonna lie, bro. This was the most intimidating part of it all for me because I'm like, I don't want to take this damn thing apart. I don't ever take this kind of stuff apart. But once again, bro, I'm an expert because I watched a damn ruck shop video. <laughs> so they have another video on their YouTube channel, of course, of the entire installation procedure of this. And bro, it is so freaking easy. I can't believe I was even slightly worried about it. Now the only tools that I need to perform this task is a Phillips screwdriver or drill and a flathead. I just have to take these three screws out right here and remove this bowl. Now these are our jets. This is the main jet and this is the idle jet. And you take those out with the flathead screwdriver. Main jet removed. Idle jet removed. So those dingy looking ones are the old jets and these ones right here in the bag, the shiny new ones are obviously our new jets. Now all we do is literally just screw the new ones back in, bro. It made sure to tell you not to tighten them. You just get them snug, give it a little turn, that's it. Now put the bowl back on. One other chugga. <laughs> there it is, bro. Our carburetor is jetted. Another good trick for keeping mosquitoes off of you. <laughs> Just put a fan on you. Those little some bitches aren't strong enough to fly in the wind, bro. But anyhow, I got the carburetor all done. Now 
Um, I was doing some research and it turns out where these coolant lines right here hook up to the carburetor, um, it's the same as our freaking Civics and stuff, man. Like you can just bypass this and get rid of it because what that does is it warms the carburetor up. So it sends the hot water from the engine before it goes through the radiator to cool it off. Um, it sends that hot water through here in which it just warms up the metal and everything. And so that's basically for like either colder weather or, you know, <laughs> I live in Arizona, bro. I don't have to worry about cold weather. Heat in your uh, carburetor ain't gonna do nothing but hurt performance. So hell yeah, I'm probably gonna get at least a good five horsepower off just bypassing that. I'm just kidding. This thing probably has five horsepower altogether. Yeah, so I have one of these barb fittings that I'm gonna actually use to just connect the two coolant lines so they're right here it's this line and this line so i'm just going to connect those two i'm going to cut them a little bit shorter and like kind of get them tucked underneath here to where it's kind of like out of sight you know um and then just connect them just jump them together and then i have a couple of these little uh rubber nipples that i'm just going to put onto this like this just this is just a, a pass through like it just passes through so realistically i don't even have to block it off but i'm going to for good measure it's all finished up dude so now our carburetor is jetted i got the shim inside of here i didn't cover doing the shim because it was a little bit of a pain in the ass but if you need to know more about that go to the ruck shops uh youtube channel they have an entire video step by step on how to do it um there is our airbox delete or our intake already on it dude look at that the freaking intake is bigger than the carburetor what's up <laughs> that's freaking nuts and there it is all back installed onto our ruckus now i went ahead and i did a bunch of the like boring stuff well i say boring stuff but i actually had quite a bit of fun doing it so brake cable is all ran going through its factory little bracket that i had to rob from the stock brake cable so i don't know i just i just like that it has that support right there it's coming around running to our brake got the throttle cable all ran and which was a little bit of a pain in the ass because um, I didn't have enough adjustment right here, so I had to undo the entire throttle cable. I had to take it all the way back out just to spin it down a little bit right here. Like I had this all the way in, so I needed to bring this down a little bit. And you have to turn the whole cable to do that. But got that done, got the uh got all the fuel lines ran. So that's all this clear tube. Actually, this one is actually coolant. So you remember that bypass that I did for the throttle body where I capped off the throttle body and I was just connecting those two hoses together? Well, I had enough of this fuel line left that I was able to just go ahead and just run a solid line from that port to the other port on the other side. So now I don't have those little um, hose clamps and that little barb fitting right in the center. And it's a clear tube, so we'll be able to see the uh, the coolant whenever I fill the system back up. So I think that'll look pretty cool. This one right here is our extended fuel line. So that comes all the way down and it plugs into the filter, which is right underneath there. So got the extended fuel line ran and it's going all the way to the carburetor right there. I got all the wiring done, bro. Um, I'm actually I'm actually really proud of myself for how I got the wiring all routed. So it it's completely in a new place like nothing is routed in the same place that it originally was so i have these wires going underneath here so you know this section right here doesn't pivot the pivot point is now moved down here so this stays stationary so we don't have to worry about those wires getting pinched um but yeah the wiring comes through there and it runs down and then over here is where it plugs into the carburetor i would imagine that's a tps I'm not sure exactly what this is but plugs in here and then the ground wire shoots underneath there wraps around comes down and bolts right back to where they had it bolted from factory um, i got everything all zip tied nice and tight and clean i love it bro i absolutely love how it came out so uh with the airbox delete it comes with obviously the intake we still have to put this block plate on for the par valve and then it also came with this little mini guy right here and this little thing actually goes right on top of the carburetor position this hose clamp where i'm gonna be able to get a screwdriver to it but yeah it goes right there
All right, well, I think I'm gonna go ahead and see if this thing will start again because I've literally had everything torn apart. I've had everything unplugged and disconnected, um, and I think I have everything connected back correctly. Be a good time to find out before we go and put everything else back on. Now, if it does start, there's still no exhaust on it, so it's still gonna sound obnoxious, but. Oh, <laughs> kill switch was on. <laughs> Dude, this thing sounds so freaking sick, man. Like, I hate that I only have an, a stock exhaust to put back on it. That is going to be most certainly one of the next upgrades. The only thing we have to put on it is this big old thing, which I do need to take this plastic shield off and probably paint this and clean it up. But I most certainly want to get an aftermarket exhaust for it. That's When I ordered all this stuff, they were sold out of the, the cheap one. The ones that they have in stock, like everywhere. We're all like five, six hundred freaking dollars, bro. And I'm sorry, I'm not spending five, six hundred dollars on the exhaust. I go to Home Depot and buy a pipe and weld it on there before I do that. I use the sriracha sauce for the lubricant, bro. You got to. <laughs> dude this thing is freaking coming out so dope made a lot of progress already man dude it looks so much better stretched braven just got home from school and he even said so himself he's like why didn't it just come like this from the factory right anyhow we still have the handlebars to do uh we got to install the lowering bracket for the seat and put the seat back on like we're in the home stretch dude get this plastic piece back on get the clamshell back on like definitely coming out dope all right guys we're almost there i'm sorry if this is a tease man uh it's just the handlebars is going to be a very involved process and i know i'm not going to get that done today so there's a lot of lines and everything that we're going to have to reconfigure like i'm honestly i'm not sure exactly how it's going to work man but we're going to figure it out like there's a there's gonna be a lot of slack that's got to be taken up because that handlebar is going to be way down here now so um that and the seat actually mounting it to the new bracket is a little involved so it's going to be kind of time consuming as well so that's going to be in the next episode bro we're going to get this thing finished up and we should be ripping it down the street anyhow smash the like button if you're enjoying the ruckus of course and peace out i'll see you on the next one